Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and today I will do a bit more of gameplay and a guide about the Cast on Crit PowerPoint, aka Spectral Throw Cast on Crit character. So I'll start off with just a gorge and talk about how you're supposed to play the character and what you kind of do with it and my choices I've made for it. So to start with, you have Spectral Throw, Cast on Crit, and GMP. Now the reason for GMP is not strictly to have better damage for Arctic Breath, but it's for the better spread of your actual Spectral Throws, so you hit a lot more targets and proc a lot more crits. If you try to use no GMP, you will notice that your clear speed is much slower and you cannot actually hit that many things. So it turns out to be much more tedious having to single target, and it just doesn't work that nicely. So GMP, absolutely essential for this build. And on top of that, you do then get Arctic Breath going into five projectiles. Now, as you can see, the playstyle revolves largely around um, whirling blades, a very fast whirling blades, and pressing flasks. Essentially, whenever you have your Vinctus flask up and you are hitting things, you are going to be just about immortal. Vinctus is what covers all of your Reflect and your Life Leech, and it does it instantly, meaning we do not need Valpact. So all you do is whirl around, throw a few Spectral Throws out every now and again, pop your Vile Haste as you feel like it. Uh, for the most part, you should be able to keep it up basically 100% of the time throughout the map, and pop a Vile Grace whenever you come across something a bit more dangerous. We do also have Fortify attached to our Whirling Blades, so if you can whirl through things, that's pretty damn good. You keep up Fortify most of the time as well. Pretty sure I don't have a Freeze Flask. All good. Oh my god. Anyway, I'll deal with all that later. I probably won't. So it's a very fast playstyle. It relies on using Flasks um, quite a lot. And you also don't necessarily need a Taste of Hate, that's mostly just there because I have one and it double dips for defense and DPS for your um, Bladefall. As you can see, once you get high enough DPS through spell damage, crit, accuracy, attack speed, um, even single target is actually pretty good on this build. Now we do have two Elrion rings, which for me right now give a total of minus 15, which almost makes Spectral Throw free. If you have two minus eights, that makes it free, and then the only thing you have to worry about is Whirling Blades costing one or two mana, and Blood Rage and Golem. So if you really want to reserve all of your mana, make sure you get minus eights, two minus eights, and then run a Blood Magic with your Golem and probably Blood Rage. But it's definitely doable to reserve all of your mana. I personally have chosen Herald of Thunder, Herald of Ice, and Purity of Elements. Purity of Elements isn't strictly necessary, but it just made my gearing a bit easier. As you can see, I'm a bit overcapped right now, and there are a few upgrades I could make, for example, rings, probably on a neck, I've only got one resist there. Boots, I've chosen to wear at series steps, so I don't have any resists. And I'll do a quick canyon as well, just to show off a another chunk of clear speed on this sort of build. Canyon over here, nothing too special. It is a very, very fast build. While leveling, I was pulling something like 300 million an hour consistently for 20 levels, and it's probably the fastest build I've managed to play this league at the very least. That is thanks to the Whirling Blades, thanks to the Frenzies and the super fast attack speed, as well as the fact that whenever you throw out some spectrals, if you just dive through mobs, they're going to proc on their way back to you. So all of that combo gives you some sick clear speed, as well as a uh, pretty much perma file haste, can't argue with that one. And it also ends up being a very safe build. So on the way to level 93 and a half now, I believe, I have died once, and that was while doing some very stupid maps and very stupid bosses can, I think, get away with doing this build completely deathless. If you play the right maps, if you build a bit, di bit differently even, because my last five or so levels I could have invested in life, but I was happy with the 5k life, so I just kept going for basically tooltip damage numbers for the fun of it. Now as far as tooltips go, 
One thing I should mention is Tooltip actually doesn't matter on your spectre throw whatsoever. Not even that much on your spells. The tooltip you do look for is on your spells, but it's more of a reference point to see how you're doing compared to previous levels and um, previous passives invested and all that. By that, what I mean is your spell tooltip is just average damage. Over here you have 9k average bladefall, Arctic Breath has 6k average, and Arc has 6.9k. Now all that means is every one of those that throws out is on average going to be doing that much DPS, and you're throwing out lots and lots of them, but it's basically just there for comparison. So when you get a 10 crit, 10 crit multi node, you can see exactly how much extra damage you're getting from that crit multi node for your blade fall, for example, compared to a spell damage node, something like that. This helps give you a reference point, so it's not DPS. So don't get focused on DPS, it's just average damage. As you can see, very fast clear speeds. And now I'll get into more of the character itself. I'm running 40% dodge, 46% spell dodge. That's thanks to acro, phase acro, and these boots. And about 25% chance evasion, which is basically coming strictly from a bit on the helm, a bit on the gloves, the boots, and a bit on the chest. My chance to hit is 89%, my crit is 73 and 72 without power charges, so I'm pretty much capped when you have power charges up. And my spell crit multi is 460. The spells themselves crit for about 41 to 50, depending if you have power charges, they all have the same base crit. The spells I have chosen to use are Arc, Arctic Breath, and Bladefall. Now it's kind of up to you which spells you use, but after lots of trial and testing, I have figured that these three give the perfect combination of single target AoE and, I guess, clear speed. But they give the perfect combination of single target and AoE. So Arc does a good bunch of chaining, gives you your shocks. Arctic Breath gives you chills, does some quite good single target and AoE, and Bladefall just does a whole bunch of damage in terms of AoE and single target. So those are my three. You don't necessarily have to use those three. Feel free to use whichever ones you want. If you're going to drop one for a 5 link, I would probably drop Arctic Breath, but once again, play around with it yourself and see how you go. Happy to share my hard -earned so on to the gear. I'll try and get through this real quick. Currently I am running a Belly of the Beast, um, I already had a 6 link Belly of the Beast, so that's why I was using it, plus it also gives a whole bunch of life. Alternatively, you can get something like a white 6 link evasion and then try and roll it yourself. That'll give you a lot more evasion, probably fill out much better resist, but give you a bit less life. As you can see I have 5200 here, without the Belly I'm at 4700. Now once again, I think you can divert more of the tree towards life if you really want to and get about 5.5k life. That is entirely your choice. My two daggers I am running are not Vagan daggers at all. That is because I have 89% hit without really investing anything in hit. As you can see, I only have hit on uh, accuracy on my helm. Excuse me, accuracy on my helm. But most of it comes strictly from the passive tree. Things like this one, things like that. But it's mostly just dexterity. You have 400 dexterity that gives you 800 accuracy and then it gets scaled through things like that and that. So I've gone for strict DPS daggers with high amounts of spell power and crit and attack speed. Your priorities are crit, into attack speed, into spell power. Beyond that, try and get some crit multi, some damage to spells. That's great as well, but if you can't, well, that's fine. Just focus on crit and attack speed. Try and get some spell power too. It shouldn't cost all that much. Before I made the build, these daggers cost me about 30 chaos each. Just because most people are looking for vegan daggers. That said, if you want to do vegan daggers, it's very still a very viable and a good option. Just make sure they're multi-modded vegan daggers and they're pretty damn good. To be able to compete with this, they have to be rather expensive. At least 2x worth, something like that. Um, that does, of course, also eliminate your need for any accuracy. So bear in mind, if you use Vegan Daggers, you don't need accuracy anymore. 
Um, like I said, two Elrond rings, preferably diamond, minus seven, minus eight. If you're going to have some unreserved mana like I do, it's not all that important to get that much minus mana. So you could even survive off like minus fives. You could even drop one of your Elrond rings and have an eight mana cost spectral throw. And that's not the end of the world because you have plenty of mana still to go, which regens by itself, but we'll also get regen from Assassin's Mark because that gives you mana when killed. Also, you get regen from Vessel of Vincta, which does 30% line damage leached as mana. So you can sustain off of that by all means, but if you get just a one mana cost, that means you can do like no regen maps without worrying at all and just forget all about mana. Now as a helm, you can use a rat's nest. I went with this helm because it fills out a lot more defensive stats and I don't think I need any more crit or attack speed given how fast I already am and how crit capped I already am. So accuracy, life, couple of resists, that's the priorities there on an evasion helm, that would be nice. Boots, I went for some serious steps with one frenzy charge. These cost an exalt, not very steep at all. They give you plenty of life, bit of spell dodge. If you're going to run a Vessel of Vinctors though, which you should, that makes you reflect immune, so you don't even really need to worry about the spell dodge. I primarily got spell dodge for reflect in the first place, but now I've just got 46% spell dodge, so I may as well keep them. If you want, get a pair of resist boots, some life, and that will do just fine too. A pair of gloves, Malagaras. Lots of crit, lots of crit multi, bit of uh, attack speed some dexterity for accuracy. Probably a best choice of glove. You could use some uh, face breakers, but that would make crit just a bit harder to fill out, so I'd recommend some Malagaras. Your belt, all you're looking for is high life and resist. I don't think you even really need strength in your belt, but it could help fill out some um, extra strength, things like increased duration. I'm okay with my strength right now. Just life, high resist, get on that. Uh, an amulet, the primary stat you're looking for in amulet is crit multi. Crit multi is the biggest damage boost by far. If you can get some spell power next, that's great too. And then you're looking for life, resists, crit chance, accuracy, all of that sort of stuff is pretty good too. Now we move on to uh, the hero of the build, the Vessel of Vincta. As you can see, it shocks all nearby enemies. It makes you shocked, so that means we need a shock immune flask and press those in conjunction with each other together, meaning you do not get shocked. It gives This one in particular gives 20% of fizz converted to lightning during the flask, so as you can see, over here I have 600 lightning damage and 2300 fizz. Press the flask, you get 1000 and 1800. So it converts your fizz damage rather than giving you any additional. All that means is you just have a higher chance to shock with your bladefall and it'll be used to leech better. So for this build, I'd say the optimal flask is probably a Vinctus that has a lightning damage two spells, but this one does just as good. It doesn't really matter which one you get, they'll both do really good work. And then of course it has 30% lightning damage leached as life, and a leech applies instantly. So this takes care of Valpact, takes care of all your leech, and because we've also picked up a couple of flask nodes here, or just this one flask node rather, it's got an increased duration and an increased flask charge gain, so it's a bit easier to sustain. As you can see, it lasts for just about 6 seconds as you press it. Two uses gives you 12 seconds worth of flask. You may need to portal in and out on some boss fights if you run out, but that is your bread and butter. Like I said, Taste of Hate, not completely essential if you can't get one. That just gives you a bit more bladeful damage in the form of cold, and it makes you a bit more defensive. Otherwise, you can run a granite, you can run a jade. That's all fine, just as a defensive flask. That's mostly what this is, a defensive flask, not an offensive flask. Zero's Promise gives you a bit more leech and some chaos damage to all your spells. Bladeful over here gets plenty of chaos. Um, that gets lots of chaos. They all get lots of chaos, thanks to that. But it also gives you a bit of that extra leech, which, comboed with the vessel, gives you a whole bunch of extra instant leech. So I like using the two together, but once again, this one's not completely essential. The only real essential flask, or even essential item for this build these days, is a Vessel of Vincta, I think. After that, just a flask. Can be instant, doesn't even really matter. I actually find myself pressing my life flask maybe once every three levels these days. That's how rare this shit is. It's usually to keep you up between packs, I suppose, while Blood Rage takes you down. And make sure it's got a bleed mod on it. 
As far as gems go, you got your Vile Haste, Vile Grace, Increased Duration, that's your combo, stick to it, probably. Um, Whirling Blades, don't have to level it at all, you get quality, faster attacks, and Lighten is just there for leveling purposes, you don't have to put anything else attached to it. And Fortify, Blood Rage, Ice Golem, Purity, um, if you can fill out your resists and you don't need a Purity, then you've still got 50% mana left over. I'd go for Anger if you can, otherwise Arctic, Bre um, Arctic Armor or whatever else you choose. I'm not too fast. Um, and then a single target here for Frenzy, just to keep up Frenzy charges on something like Ziri. Otherwise it's barely ever used. And it also gives you a Fortify on demand. So that is Frenzy, Faster Attacks, Power Charge on Crit, and Fortify. Our Curse on Hit setup is Herald of Thunder, Curse on Hit, Herald of Ice, and Assassin's Mark. That keeps up your Power Charges, that keeps up your Curse for the most part. And we've already mentioned our 6 Link. Now, as far as jewels go, the perfect sort of jewel is pretty much this, Spell Power and Life. Because, as you'll notice, throughout the entire tree, you get basically no damage whatsoever. All of your damage comes strictly from crit and crit multi. That means that any spell power you can get on your jewels and on your weapons and on neck is going to be a huge boost to the skill's damage. Let's just have a look here. 6700 average. Take away this one jewel, and we're down to 6100. That's 600 average damage, or about 10% of our damage from one jewel. The jewels that have crit multi, spell power, dude spell power, those are the biggest benefits to the build. Otherwise I have um, some crit multi here. This one just has a whole bunch of attack speed and some crit multi. That one attack speeds, life and spell damage. Kind of exalted that one I think to make it. And once again spell damage, attack speed and life. So life is my priority, as well as spell damage when getting jewels. From the passive tree itself, we start as a scion going through the attack speed. You can go through the spell power, it's probably point for point better damage. But the attack speed node also opens you up to some crit multi, which is what I decided to do. You get a shitload of crit from the tree in form of dagger nodes. You don't need Adder's Touch because that only applies to dagger attacks, i.e. your spectral throw, and that doesn't do your damage. It's all from the spells. I get the spell crit node wheel. That's quite a big boost to your damage of your spells. Um, and yeah, that's about all that needs to be said. Get as much life as you can from the tree that I did. Um, phase acro, not entirely necessary, but I decided to do it. Um, this is the only flask node I deemed worth getting. There is also this one, but that's just flask charges gained, so I decided not to do it. I was much more interested in duration. Because we are dual wielding, you get twin terrors, that fills out a lot more crit. As well as that, because we're dual wielding, you get the implicit from both the daggers, 40% and 40%. So while dual wielding, it's so much easier to fill out crit. As well as that, you get a lot more attack speed while whirling around. So if you want to not dual wield, you won't grab twin terrors, you'll probably go through here instead and get rid of that as well. But you'll have a lot less crit, you'll probably have to run a rat's nest as well. It's entirely up to you and what you decide to do there. Um, the build also has 1.6 and 1% life regen there, that's 2.6. On top of that you can get this one here, that'll be 3.6, and that basically essentially negates Blood Rage 100%, but I don't feel like I need that. Um, Blood Rage barely degens me right now anyway, and Vessel of Vincta keeps me up as long as it's up and I'm attacking anyway, doesn't matter. Um, as far as leveling goes, I do have a leveling guide for that, I'll try and link that in the YouTube. But essentially I leveled with Spectral Throw all the way up to 38 with some elemental gear and elemental damage, static electricity, that sort of thing really helps. And then at 38 I went with Dual Angles, a Tabula, and 6 linked a cast on crit and just leveled from there. Well, that was a long as a balls guide. I hope you guys enjoy the build. I hope you guys give it a go. It's very fun, very laggy, and very fast. This was the cast on crit PowerPoint or spectral throw build. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.